Our new record is called Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. We actually came up with that title. Um, I was walking through the bus. Micah was sitting right there. And he had it up on his uh, screensaver, close on the counts in Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. He was thinking about getting it as a tattoo. And I said, that would make a great album title. And he was like, yeah, yeah, it would. And I was like, we should do that. And he's like, you won't do that. Like instantly, right then when he said you won't do that, it instantly became the next title for our new album. This is the first project that we've really, really all collaborated on. And um, as far as just feeling unified and part of the same mission and goal, it's, it's never been stronger. Overall, uh, I'm mostly inspired by uh, like old blues players. My main influences have been like Dream Theater and probably Kill Switch Engage. And Top 40, believe it or not. Pretty much anything you'd hear on like pop radio. Uh, this guy listens to Kelly Clarkson. I love all the Kelly time. Clarkson. I don't know that there was any direct influences that I took into this record because uh, we were just trying to do something different. The writing began probably a year and a half before we got into the studio. I mean, I think we went in there with 36 songs. The first song that we wrote was The Ballad of St. Augustine, and um, we wrote that all together, and that was really a lot of fun uh, to write that song. I started playing guitar in high school. My mom had an acoustic guitar that she gave me like three chords, and she just said, here you go, this is all I know. I started singing in church when I was five years old. I started playing when I was five. I got my first drum kit was on when I was five. I've been playing guitar for 12 years, I believe. I got my first guitar on my eighth birthday, so about 15 years ago. Um, when was the last time you broke a guitar? Uh, Germany a couple years ago. I did a guitar spin and my strap broke and it just skidded across the stage. And that guitar was a wedding gift from my wife. Oh, fail. Touring is is uh, what we've been known for. It's, you know, we've always wanted to, A, make our live show fun. We want to engage the crowd. We want them to feed off of our energy, and then in turn, we feed off of their energy. It was uh, a really good day whenever Mike could join the band because, you know, we knew that he was like an acrobat you know, former uh, Swedish gold medal Olympian. I'm kidding, it's not true. I love performing. It's a blast. It's so much fun when you get a crowd that's just super energetic and everybody's sweating it out together. It's not just like, we're the band you watch. Like, when everybody's doing it together and everybody's having a great time, there's just this huge connection with all these kids. Sometimes we'll uh, declare fun show. Yeah. And that means you're not allowed to be serious on stage. Like, we'll come by and kick you in the pants if you're just... Every show to every other show for the past three years, no joke, for real. Somebody's come up and said they did attempted suicide, like last night, last week, last month, last year whether cutting or into some other self-destructive behavior. Two of the songs that I feel are gonna really make an impact, um, you know, for people that are uh, struggling, facing those type of things, are Invisible and Worth the Pain. I know for me, when I was um, a teenager listening to uh, Christian music, um, I loved the music with the message. I would find myself, you know, singing the words of these songs, you know, all day. and. Um, you know, I believe there's power in music, but there's also power in the gospel. And uh, when you're singing it, even though you're not even maybe thinking about what you're singing, I mean, you're singing a powerful message. And that's kind of, uh, it, when I was doing that as a kid, it really led me and, you know, almost gave me um, strength and inspiration to, you know, stay on the right path and um, avoid a lot of the pitfalls that I could have gotten into. And I think, um, you know, that's what we want to offer to Christians and non-Christians as well. Just anybody that listens to our music, um, you know, a positive message that, you know, when they're hopefully liking the music, but when they're singing the message, you know, that they're singing the Word of God and it's getting in their heart and, and uh, you know, changing their life. Go ahead, you're never gonna take me. You can